If you guys remember, in 2012, we covered the story of an Irish woman named Savita Halapanavar and how she was denied a life-saving abortion multiple times. She, of course, died as a result of this. And uh, as a result of that story, Irish politicians budged about a centimeter with their 100% abortion ban and they decided to clarify, and they did make one exception. They said, quote, A woman may terminate a pregnancy in cases where her life is in danger, including in cases where her mental health poses a suicide risk. In order for a woman to get approved for that new exemption, a panel of three doctors must unanimously, uh, I'm sorry, must examine her and unanimously agree that an abortion is necessary to save her life. So now we have the first high-profile test of that law, and it didn't go so well. A young woman whose name is being withheld by the media was brutally raped, and she became extremely depressed and suicidal as a result of this. And at eight weeks, she went for an abortion. Now here's the trick that they played on her. The, the government did this. The psychologists reviewed the case right away. So, the two psychologists approved that she should get the abortion. But the third doctor, being an obstetrician, said no. But here's what they did. She saw the psychologist right away, and then it took 17 weeks for the obstetrician to respond. And so, by the time the obstetrician responded and said no anyway, they were like, whoops, well, even if she had said yes, look at that, your fetus is viable today at 25 weeks, so it looks like you're going to have the baby regardless. So it appears like there's some fuckery going on behind the scenes to try to make it so that even though on the books you're allowed an abortion in this very rare circumstance, even in that rare circumstance, when it arri arrives or arises, they could still go, yeah, no, sorry, we're just not going to do it because that's not what we believe. Look, man, we've talked about this before on the show. On the issue of abortion, you have to be open-minded, you have to be rational, you have to be reasonable, and you have to reject extremes. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, that means looking at the situation as it exists and saying, well, to the people who want to have abortion in all circumstances until three seconds before the fetus becomes a baby and is born, well, you're, you've gone a little too far, you should acknowledge that, and we should craft a policy to avoid that, right? But it also requires people on the opposite extreme to give concessions also, and to say, we're not going to say that the moment conception happens, or the second you're done having sex, there's a third person in the room with all the same rights as a 45-year-old man or woman, because that's insanity, that's not true. Because we're talking about gametes and zygotes and embryos and pre-gestation fetuses, and they're at different stages of development. And there's a reason why we don't call that a human, because it's not a human yet. And of course, it's the decision of the woman at that point in time. Look, you have to understand, I sympathize with the pro-life people to a certain extent. I think they come from a place that it doesn't matter if it's based on religion or not religion, because there's an argument for it one way or the other. So you have to be reasonable, and you have to draw a line somewhere. But where you draw the line should be at about fetal viability. I always say, whenever the nervous system is developed in the fetus, then you draw a line and you say, okay, only for, uh, you know, certain exceptions can you get a, an abortion after this. So whether it's 20 weeks or 23 weeks, and then after that, first 20, 23 weeks, hey, all your decision, 100%, uh, the government can't get involved. After that line, it better be for uh, li life of the mother, rape, incest, or the fetus isn't going to make it anyway, so you need to do it for medical reasons. So there's a happy medium. I know it's weird to call anything happy on the issue of abortion, but there's this area where it's a sweet spot where sane people in both parties can agree. But the problem in the world today is that too many people are leaning towards the side of extremism in the anti-abortion direction. And here's something that's going to blow your fucking mind. Did you know the countries that ban abortion actually have more abortions? You're thinking, well, how's that even possible? Well, the reality is, it doesn't matter the legal status of it, people are going to get it anyway, okay? And what happens is, people in countries that have it banned, 
they usually also discourage, uh, you know, condom use and contraception and family planning and sex education. So people get pregnant and then they go to back alleys where people use hangers on them to do abortions and then they get infections and die. Over 40,000 women die every year from back alley abortions, from botched abortions. In fact, the UN said just last month that this is a human rights concern, you have to stop. And they pointed out specific countries, Chile and other countries, and they said, you gotta stop with this full abortion ban nonsense. It doesn't make sense, you're killing more people. So the final point to make here is, if you're actually pro-life, you need to be in favor of abortion. You certainly need to be in favor of a moderate abortion policy that is most reasonable and most open-minded. Because, look, women are going to die. Actual grown women are going to die if you, you don't give people access to abortion. And this is another example right here of that extremist ideology screwing up somebody's life. You have a rape victim who was suicidal and depressed and they forced her to have a baby. Is that morality?